Am I making sense? I mean, well, only one way to find out. Hello and welcome <laughs> to Ask Lovecraft After Dark, a very special episode. Uh, we are joined once again by Scott Glancy, Rachel Kolar, and eventually Molly Tanzer will be uh, uh, saddling up with us uh, to return to the Hollow Earth. Uh, if y'all missed our uh, our holiday adventures, I think it was I think it was around Christmas, a little before Christmas, Christmas time. We literally literally <laughs> did it at Christmas. <laughs> uh, we uh, we played uh, Hollow Earth or, Expedition, or, which is an, or Yule. There we go. Yule. Yes, more appropriately. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, our, the crazy rich guy with his Yule celebration. <laughs> That's right, drinking out of Viking horns. Um, it was good. Uh, yeah, we uh, we did our first uh, first uh, foray into it, and uh, Scott is very kind to agree to uh, take us back to the Hollow Earth, uh, and uh, uh, we are going to be be doing that. Um, but uh, while we're waiting for our, our party to fully come together, uh, I figured I'll have folks uh, introduce each other. If you in fact uh, missed uh, our previous uh, previous episode or missed uh, my fantastic interview with Scott uh, a while back, so yes, I'll, Scott, I'll start with you. Hooray! Okay, so uh, Scott Glancy, um, only surviving legionnaire here at Fort Peg and Publishing, uh, desperately trying to make more uh, Call of Cthulhu stuff via Peg and Publishing, but also doing a, a lot of writing for Arc Dream Publishing for the new uh, Delta Green role-playing game. Um, the uh, through Arc Dream uh, uses a proprietary system very much like the old Sixth Edition Call of Cthulhu. For those who are familiar, Delta Green. Uh, is uh, modern conspiracy and Lovecraftian cosmic horror when we do it properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and we when we do it improperly, it's just, you know, murder hobos with guns instead of, <laughs> instead of knives, you know? It's, um, <laughs> it's supposed to be a game about solving mysteries, but at some point it always ends up with the players, you know, hitting some poor NPC that they've overly focused it on, you know, and and hitting his head in a car door, screaming, where are the clues? Where are the clues? <laughs> the, 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 time, the, the one time I played it, it just sort of uh, devolved into us all going on a mescaline trip. So, Oh, yes. Know. I believe you, you, you mentioned that in the game, one of the things you're supposed to do is your characters are supposed to take psychoactive drugs. Um, <laughs> And I could all I could think of was that is a terrible idea. That is, <laughs> that is everything you really shouldn't do. You're gonna have a hard enough time with the real shit that's happening um, <laughs> in the game, since it is another game that's based on sanity loss uh, as being more important than uh, hit point loss. So your characters go bugo uh, <laughs> long before they they go uh, they get killed. Well, in a game where where the walls can literally start melting, you don't want to have to be confused about whether the walls are melting. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. The last thing you want, yeah, is, is the guy going, no, 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 it's not a real transdimensional horror. I'm just having a bad trip. <laughs> um, I disbelieve, and then it just chews him down. Nom nom nom. You know, that's oh, and now that we're uh, talking about uh, Should I be hearing bad something? trips. Yes, yes, you are here. Hearing? Welcome. Oh, I am now. Sorry, here I'm sorry. Go. I'm we're... having computer troubles. Um, you're but in. I'm here now. You're, you're in. Everything. You're live. You're, uh, we're, we're live. We are going through doing our introductions. So, uh, Rachel, let us know uh, who you are. I and, can hear uh, you, Rachel. What's going down? Uh, hello, my name is Rachel Kohler, and uh, I'm the author of several short stories for adults that are kind of in the dark fantasy, light horror, dark sci-fi kind of kind of vein. Not not quite horror, but not pleasant either. Um, and I've also written a picture book about Halloween because that's as close as you can get to dark fantasy for uh, for first graders. It's called Mother. Go blah, 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 I can talk. It's called Mother Ghost Nursery Rhymes for Little Monsters, and it's a bunch of nursery rhymes, uh, reskins to have Halloween twists. So uh, Merry, Merry, Tall and Scary, Wee Willie Werewolf, that kind of thing. And it's available at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and various other places where books are sold. Excellent. And Molly, welcome. Who are you? Well, I can't hear what Lehman's saying, so Oh dear, I'm... that's not good. Uh -oh. Lehman wants Luckily... to know who you are. Uh, this is going to be great. Uh, I'm going to see what my other computer does, but I will answer this question until someone else can speak. I am Molly Tanzer. I am a writer. Usually I'm more competent at technology than I am at this time. Can you hear me? We can yes. hear you. Yes. yes. Well, just, it's just the men can't hear me. This is, that's like the American experience. Um, like I, okay. This is interesting. Like, um, 
I, I write, I write dark fantasy and horror. Um, I write novels and short fiction. I do some editorial work. I was just nominated for a fancy award. So I'm just gonna brag on that right now. I was nominated Ooh. for the Lotus Award for the second of my series. And I am about to find my other computer and boot it up and see if I can on that computer hear what men are saying, which is usually not my goal, but tonight it is. <laughs> uh, and I guess uh, for uh, folks who know our guests, uh, uh, but have stumbled upon here. So I'll be right Hawaii. back in two seconds. I really, 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 really apologize. <laughs> All good. Uh, I'm Lehman Kessler. Uh, I uh, host uh, Ask Lovecraft, the uh, three times a week uh, series where I impersonate HP Lovecraft for reasons that are questionable and more so every day. Um, uh, this is Ask Lovecraft After Dark, my sister program uh, that I started up because I like talking to people and doing cool things like playing uh, Hollow Earth Expedition with them. Uh, and I want to thank everyone uh, for being part of this. Uh, thank Molly once uh, she gets her uh, computer up and running. Uh, do you want to give just sort of a quick rundown of what Hollow Earth Expedition is, Scott, sure, for those sure. who may be unaware and sort of how you came across uh, it? For those of you who didn't manage to see the previous episode uh, or haven't heard about Hollow Earth Expedition, um, first of all, ta-da, Hollow Earth Expedition. There's the, <laughs> the, the cover art, the brilliant cover art uh, for it, uh, which involves, you know, ancient ruins, dinosaurs, and tunneling machines. Um, basically, the guys at Exile Studios created a game, a role-playing game, that is essentially a whole lot of Edgar Rice Burroughs um, combined with a lot of pulp. Um, they've, they, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote his own Hollow Earth stuff at the Earth's core of the store when he wasn't writing Tarzan or uh, John Carter of Mars. So basically, um, it's, a, it's a game set in the 30s. It's designed to uh, create a kind of pulp feel, a pulp genre feel. It's about uh, punching Nazis off of Zeppelins into dinosaurs is basically what the game is about. Um, it's all, you know, the pulp tropes of, yes, you could have a sword fight, but wouldn't it be better if you had a sword fight on the back of a train that's <laughs> on fire? I mean, you know, it, it, it kind of always wants you to crank the dial up to 11. Um, and uh, it's a marvelous system. Uh, that I quite like, and uh, one of the things it does very well is it uh, gives the characters flaws that allows them to buy more skills. But through your flaws, you get to cheat at the game. Um, every time you play to your flaw and indulge your 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 character's worst aspects, that they doing things that they you know they shouldn't do, but your character is curious or a daredevil or whatever. Um, or a libertine, I believe, is somebody's problem. Says the man with the wine glass. Uh, <laughs> whenever you indulge your flaw, you get these uh, points that are called style points, and they allow you to cheat at the game. Do rolls over, add dice to your rolls, uh, take dice away from other people's rolls, things like that, which is how the heroes are sort of mechanically set apart from the normal rubes of the, of the game. Uh, not to mention, um, it... Uh, you know, it, it just you know it 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 it, mechan it gives a mechanic that gives you a bonus for playing your flaw. There's plenty of games that have flaws in character creation, but these guys did a really good job of making it a benefit to play to your flaw as opposed to something you just ignore the rest of the game. Uh, and I'm very fond of it. I've been looking for a good pulp game since 1981 when Raiders of the Lost Ark came out, and um, I had picked up many of the pulp games in the meantime, like uh, Fantasy Game Unlimited uh, Daredevils, and I picked up uh, 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 Justice Unlimited, which was the champion's version of pulp, you know, masked uh, vigilantes like the Shadow or uh, Zorro or whatever. And these guys at Exile Studios finally really delivered a top flight pulp game. It's got the right mechanics, it's got the right feel, uh, and uh, most of the games. Uh, center around trying to find your way into or out of the hollow earth. Uh, this giant uh, other world that exists beneath our feet, or does it? Uh, created by, who knows, Atlanteans? Aliens? Are Atlanteans aliens? I don't know. <laughs> and what's the connection to Mars? Because gosh darn it, they wouldn't have made a, a book called Revelations of Mars if you weren't going to end up on Mars at some point. So... Yeah, um, it's got everything. It's got evil Oriental masterminds and nefarious Nazi sorcerers, uh, 
thuggish gangsters, ferocious Neanderthals, uh, bloodthirsty cannibals. It's got all the things. It's got all the things. And it's a, it's a marvelously fun game. And uh, it's really built like an old cereal, which is how we're structuring the game today. Um, when we played last time, we didn't start them off at the beginning. We started three episodes in to Heroes of Hyperborea um, and started at uh, Yuletide uh, uh, Danger. I don't know. I couldn't think of anything that being with a, something that rhymed with Y for that episode. Oh, Escape <laughs> from the Bone Palace. That's what it was called because the guy had a collection of artifacts and bones. Yes. Um, yes. Yuletide Danger or something like that. Um, this one, of course, would be called, um, let's see, I think I wrote it down here. Uh, here's Viperborea, episode five, Jotunheim Jagstaffel, which is basically <laughs> means uh, a squadron from the land of the giants or something like that. And bad, bad Norse and bad German combined. So there. All right. Uh, Molly, are you with us? I am. I, 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 don't, I don't know why you can't see me. We, we can uh, see you. Well, it's a lovely picture. Oh, thanks. It's twenty. It's twenty first century America. So I guess you can find your own answer. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. I. I. This was. I don't understand. Like I called Mac once to ask them why I couldn't use Google Hangouts on this laptop that's supposed to be good, and they were like, "We don't know." And it's like, who do you call at Google when you can't use Google Hangouts? Like you can't call anyone. So I apologize. <laughs> Um, but I am here and I can hear everyone and that seems better than seeing everyone, but not hearing everyone. So. Mm -hmm. We'll take it. We will take it. This is, a, this is essentially a radio play. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> and I am, I did, I am prepared in one way, which is that I do have a frosty can of mead. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Priority. Uh, okay. Well, if, every, if everyone can hear everyone, let's uh, jump right on in, Scott. Okay. Scott, um, you and me both. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, do the do. This is the uh, this is this is the nerd standard. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, do you guys want to introduce your characters to the uh, audience? Uh, yes. A uh, uh, quick note: we do have a little bit of echo coming through. I don't know if uh, someone's mic is picking that up or someone's headphones aren't. Um, it but does then, sound but... like you're coming from the future. Future, future, future. <laughs> uh, but while that's happening, I will, uh, I'll start off. Uh, I am Gentleman John, the psychic to the stars. Ghosts are real. That's, that's pretty much that, it. Uh, that only, really only, worked with this only feedback. <laughs> <laughs> the feedback is creating it. Uh, 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 the only real difference, I suppose, between uh, previous episode and now is uh, he now has an eye patch for uh, no explicable reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something happened a couple of episodes ago where he got an eye patch. <laughs> That's rough. Um, all right, uh, you, Rachel. Tell us about all right. Edith Carruthers. Edith Carruthers is uh, un unknown to everyone in the world, uses the synonym Richard Kane to uh, describe her amazing adventures that she has, tracking down all kinds of strange artifacts and hunting vicious beasts all across the world, and sells all these, these tales of her adventures to magazines that cater to the adventurous gentleman, none of which have any idea if she has lady bits. <laughs> your, your nom de guerre is Richard, Richard Kane? Yes. yes. All right, number plume, I guess. <laughs> and you, Miss Tanzer. Um, I I will be I will be inhabiting the character of Catastrophe Mel, who is the rootinest, tootinest, trick ridingest, uh, Wild West washed up child star that could possibly be in a game. <laughs> And that is who she is, and I don't even, I, if she had anything else that was a part of her, I've forgotten it in a haze of whatever. I, I, but, I'm, uh, pretty, I'm pretty sure that Nell came to the surface. She, she emerged uh, the first time you were, you were asked, so what do you do? Um, we knew who she was almost immediately. Yeah. yeah, she's not as drunk as Calamity Jane from Deadwood, but like, <laughs> it's not out of the, it's not, it's, that's a possible ending for her. <laughs> She does have a fondness for canapes. That has been established. Oh yeah, she does. She does like a swanky party treat. That's a pretty good right there. Good, good, good mess. Better than a can of beans heated up over an old campfire again. When, when we last left, our intrepid adventurers, uh, it was two episodes ago. 
Uh, and since then, you have had many adventures which have led to you uh, journeying to the Arctic Circle uh, in an, uh, uh, an Arctic exploration vessel called the Leaf Erickson. And I suspect because only Molly didn't echo, I think the echo is coming from Molly. So if you've got headsets to put on, Molly, I would recommend it. Uh, I'm, um, I'm extremely unprepared tonight. It's very embarrassing. Um, it's all good. I, I don't worry about to, it. Okay. Uh, if you find some headset, try it. See if it works. Okay. Um, anyways. The dog's not mine. No, that's my dog. That's so there we go. We've all, okay. you know what? We've all got issues. It's not a dog. <laughs> it is Fenris the wolf. Come forth for Ragnarok. That's right. Foley artist extraordinaire. So, um, when last we left you, uh, in the episode that we didn't actually play, um, you had, uh, taken off in a, uh, in your, uh, uh, seaplane, uh, to, uh, which was, uh, you know, uh, sort of part of your expedition. They, uh, winched it off of the top, of, uh, off of the deck of the, um, uh, off of the deck of your ship. And I even can go over here to screen share. See if I can make this work. This would be so cool if I can make this work. Screen share, application window, ta-da! And then I share, and I show this lovely Ooh. aircraft. That is your uh, single prop 1935 uh, aircraft, which is unbelievably named the Norden Norseman. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You are flying in an aircraft called the Norseman. Did not plan that. Was just looking for an aircraft that spent a lot of time flying over the Yukon Tundra, came up with that, so there. So yes, you've, the, the Yukon Tundra. So, all right, let's go back to me. Um, uh, your uh, pilot, uh, who is, let's see, your pilot, uh, let's see, your uh, Captain Jacques Marin uh, has uh, a World War I flying ace, um, has been uh, forced to turn back uh, because even though the bone map that you guys had uh, had gotten from the vault uh, of the uh, nefarious and and very weird uh, what's his <laughs> name Thorsten Kirkendall uh, did in fact did in fact lead you to uh, find what is the alleged opening uh, into the uh, to the lost land of Jodenheim, the land of the frost giants, uh, north above the Arctic Circle here. Uh, the aircraft ran into a dense fog bank. The instruments began to spin wildly, and your pilot uh, decided that he wanted to try and uh, Mr. Uh, Jacques wanted to decided he wanted to try and turn back um, uh, because uh, he was not happy with the flying conditions. And as you are winging your way back uh, on a close uh, closing and on empty fuel tank. Uh, you uh, see a column of black smoke rising from the sea, and my goodness, the uh, the, the Arctic exploration vessel, the Leif Erikson, is in flames and sinking beneath the icy waves and out of the stark uh, Arctic sun plunges a pair of Nazi biplanes, uh, the fabulous uh, Ard Adro 68, because apparently... I'm going to decide that uh, it's more realistic to have an aircraft from the period than it is to have, you know, cool Mischerschmitts, which would be the airplane everyone knows. But there you go. Nazi biplanes swooping in on you, firing their machine guns, and uh, generally stitching up your aircraft with uh, you know, bullets and making everybody uncomfortable as, as Jacques attempts to outmaneuver the Bosch, as he refers to them. Oh, this is a good. So Great that is you dropped in. You have been dropped into a, into a dogfight. Uh, now, I uh, took the, your character sheet on the second page, and I filled in a bunch of uh, gear. Um, this is mostly gear that sort of, uh, gee, it would be good if we had it just in case the plane got stuck on the ice or something. It's not a full expedition kit. Um, uh, you guys are all bundled up in Arctic clothing because it's the Arctic and, uh, there isn't anything in the way of, a you know, uh, a seat warmer on this 1935 airplane. You're just stuck. 
uh, with the Arctic wind blowing past at, you know, minus 30 degrees or whatever it is, and are swooping uh, towards the, uh, uh, well, at this point, Jacques is turning the aircraft around and then attempting to flee from the Nazis. Uh, you guys have some equipment on your sheets. Uh, please consult. Um, is there anything you particularly want to do uh, in the aircraft besides a hold on for dear life? Uh, I want to make sure that my uh, glass of bubbly doesn't slosh over. Okay. You should probably be using a dip deeper glass than a fluted um, champagne glass. I think that's the Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Drink it all now before it spills. <laughs> before, look, look, look. before the catastrophe. You should probably just throw that back. Uh, how, about, how about you there, Molly? Well, catastrophe, now just having a lot of technological difficulties right now because apparently Mac doesn't make anything that has the right kind of plugins for nothing in this time period. But <laughs> why would you even give somebody headphones that don't even plug into the computer they bought and paid money for? But I don't know. I'd I'd, I'd like to I'd like to try to shoot me a Nazi actually. <laughs> we'll take any amount of reverb for uh, some shot Nazis. Yes, yeah. I'm 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 willing to try that. All right. Um, now, the aircraft does not have any rear-facing windows. Um, it is uh, it just has side windows. Uh, and so I will uh, roll some dice over here and see if Jacques is able to turn the aircraft in a manner that would give people the opportunity to shoot out the windows of the rifle. Um, Rachel, your character yes. also has a rifle. Yeah, is, 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 is Lehman just gonna, sitting between the two of you spilling champagne on you while the two of you blaze the way out the windows with long arms? Uh, probably. <laughs> that sounds about right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless I can summon some ghosts to, like, you know, get, you know, knock out these Nazis. Um, Perhaps you could, uh, you could ask them if they want to see a card trick. <laughs> um i guess uh, uh i will i will just sort of tap into uh, if there's any way i can use my pro cognitive defense to any way sort of like help okay. i'm not going to steer the plane but i mean <laughs> okay try to try to figure out the you know the most uh easy uh place to go or you know use the force essentially to guide us through all right, all right. um the best you can do is 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 sort of give Jacques a a uh, boost to his uh, dogfighting skill uh, by uh, adding your perception uh, to his defensive maneuvers. And I think your perception is what? Uh, my perception is six. Let's see here. All right, you're being snuck up on by a ninja. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, your perception right. is in fact six. Okay, so I will, uh, I'll go ahead and roll that. And I just count evens, correct, for the audience yes, at home? Yes, yes. Okay, so that is going to be uh, two. <laughs> okay. Let's see how Jacques's doing. Aim right. for the white. <laughs> it's either snow or clouds. You got a fifty percent chance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how that works, but all right. Sky or ground? That's one out of two. That's definitely fifty percent chance. Precisely. All right. Um. Uh. You are so you're yelling things like you know oh bank left bank left and he's like you know not really paying attention to you because he doesn't know you can do this but uh, the result is is the aircraft gets stitched up by some uh, machine gun bullets um, you can see uh, sparks coming off the wings uh, as the bullets pass through the metal um, let's see here uh, Jacques is not doing a great job of turning the aircraft in such a way that uh, the two people on the side can get a good shot at these Germans. Um, the Krauts are apparently sticking uh, close on your tail and uh, could, I suppose, shoot at them through the windows, but it would require you doing something truly awful, which would be to um, stick the upper part of your body out the window. <laughs> And try and shoot directly back. Who wants to try that? I well, I mean, I've got both a flaw of being a thrill seeker and trick ride, and that seems like it should mount more than just a toothache and an anthill. Yeah, I'm gonna say you're gonna you'd be required to do this yeah. since you have 
And oh, by the way, uh, go ahead, since you're going to uh, go with your thrill seeker uh, flaw to do this incredibly risky and dangerous thing, uh, you get an extra style point. So you should be up to five style points there. So just be aware of it. Probably. Or you can even write it on the the, the, the PDFs or I am. Are, are I typed it in. This Excellent. Is very, yeah, in 2017, I turned over a new life, a new leaf, and I write things on my character sheet. So this is very good. Um, this is awesome. Yeah, I, I decided it was time to start. Uh, okay, so right, how so, do I play this game? All right. First of all, <laughs> there's going to be we just take your uh, uh, we take your take rifle. Uh, now, unfortunately, I kind of ran out of space, space uh, writing things on people's characters uh -huh. and their character sheets. But here's what you do: uh, your uh, rifles, your 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 uh, firearm skill is an eight. You got a ten because you've specialized in pistol, but you've got an eight in uh, regular all kinds of firearms, including this rifle. So what we do is we take this. And we take that eight, and just trust me when I say that uh, adding uh, the rifles gives you four extra dice. So you'll have 12 dice to at this aircraft behind you. Well, listen, I'm glad I'm having this conversation with you, oh, Lord, but I don't have a rifle. I only have a Colt Peacemaker. Aha! But I have put on the back of your sheet uh, under gear Winchester Rifle. Uh, oh, now, no. unfortunately, there wasn't space on the front of the sheet to add oh, another weapon. Oh, I got it. Oh, you're right. I do have it. You're right. You're right. Yeah. right. Sorry. There, so, there um, we're just going to limp along uh, cool. with the fact that it's a four-shot rifle before you have to reload. And according to the material I have over here, it adds four dice to your skill. So you got 12 points. You got 12 dice to roll. Tell me all the evens you roll. Uh, what um um I'm I I so my 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 inability to get my computer working means I don't even know what kind of dice they ah, normally, normally there's a specialized there's silly dice, dice in the game that I will hold up, but basically this game works only on successes or failures. You get a bunch of dice, you roll them. The number of times you roll even is a success. Great, and. That's all you need to do. You can use any mix of dice. Thanks, everybody. Uh, okay, so I have 12 of these? Yep. Oh, my God. One. Okay, so we're going to do... Oh, that's a lot. One, two, three. I was I, I was doing so good. And then... Um, okay, so that's six. So I'll just do this twice. Okay, so I tell you the evens? Yes. Three evens plus... Uh, six evens. Wow. Okay. Um, you manage to fire a shot back, and uh, actually manage to hit the aircraft. Um, uh, there was a lot of minus on that roll because Jock's airplane is flying all over the place, and the Germans are flying back and forth. But you actually tagged um the, the pursuing aircraft and it that does seem to have rattled uh the german pilot we assume he's german he's got a big swastika on the airplane um you know could be posers um but you seem to have genuinely rattled him because instead of getting super close to your aircraft and riddling it with bullets uh he peels off and um sort of breaks off the attack uh, that means only one aircraft is shooting at you guys this time. All right. Yes, um, you're still getting uh, rattled with bullets. Uh, Jacques has dove the aircraft back into the cloud bank. Uh, immediately, uh, the uh, instruments in the aircraft all start going strange. The uh, barometer... The altimeter, the uh, compass starts to spin around wildly. Um, uh, but uh, you guys sink into the uh, cloud bank, and uh, the uh, uh, attack seems there seems to be a lull in the attack as you uh, dip into the cloud bank. And let's see here. And Jacques turns, you know, turns around in his pilot seat and says, "The you know the appropriate." 
Well, I think we lost them. Just before bullets, just before <laughs> bullets come flying to the aircraft again, as there's yet another attack on your aircraft. Tracer rounds crash through the windows, shatter the controls. Boom! There's blood all over the inside of the cockpit. Your aircraft begins to lose altitude. Um, Jacques, I grab the wheel. Oh, that's what I wanted to hear. Okay, sir. I believe pilot aircraft in this game is a skill dominated by it's either intelligence or dexterity. Let's let's go find out what your base number is. I'm pretty sure it's um I'm pretty sure it's it's going to be a three no matter what. Okay. Excellent. I, I do have drive, right? Like well, you do. Like have <laughs> this should be like my, you know, my limousines that I'm used to driving around, All right? All right, here we go. Yes, dexterity. <laughs> All right, please roll uh, three dice, please. All right. Oh, that's uh, that's one success. Excellent. Um, the the aircraft appears to be going down. You're <laughs> fairly certain that down is the way it's going. Now you think it's going down because um uh. Catastrophe Nell and Edith Carruthers are are stuck to the ceiling of the aircraft compartment. Oh no! As it's plunging out of the one presumes plunging out of the sky. Um, actually, I guess Catastrophe Nell isn't really plunging out of the sky. She's halfway out the window. Do you see her legs kicking inside the inside the aircraft? Uh, Edith, would you like to possibly help pull her back inside the aircraft? It, I, I'm gonna try and like maneuver myself around from my stuck to the ceiling position and kind of grab hold of her ankles and make Okay. Room. Then in that case, give me a uh, roll on your either strength or athletics. Okay. I do have some athletics. Cool. All right, you do have some athletics. I believe it's six dice. The average is three. Yes. Dang. And every one of those dice is either a four or a two. Okay. Um, you uh, can haul her back in the window with no trouble. She returns from whence she came out of the aircraft. Um, Molly, um, I shouldn't skip you. Uh, before you were jerked back in the window... Do you want to do something about this jerk who's riddling your aircraft with bullets? Um, can um, how is is this rifle? Can I can I is it possible I can reload it from this bandolier? Oh while yeah, hanging out of the airplane while doing this. Well, this rifle you can reload it by working. It's got like a lever, cool, like an old Winchester seventy six. All right, but it is a Winchester ninety five. Teddy Roosevelt's favorite gun. Oh. Um. Uh, you can, in fact, fire it again. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to wing him again. All right, go ahead. All right. Um, that's seven successes. Okay. Um, you uh, you definitely managed to hit the aircraft. Um, uh, put one into the sort of the. Uh, it goes through the prop, uh, shatters the um, glass of the open pilot's cockpit, and uh, this guy breaks off his attack as well. And you guys uh, plunge further into the, uh, the, the mists, uh, not knowing quite where the ground is. I'm sure that when Rachel pulls you back in the window, you're like, I could have got him, and you just you ruined my shot, pulling on my legs. It's... But, um, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> gentlemen, John, uh, how are you doing, uh, with, uh, the part where you're about to become a ghost? Uh, luckily I'm very well, uh, expertise in ghosts. So as long as, uh, we are able to, uh, you know, uh, just make peace with these things, we should be good. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll me some dice, sir. Give me three dice. That's uh, one success once again. The aircraft continues to plunge. Uh, let's see how Jacques's doing. 
Uh, Jock says something to the effect of, oh. <laughs> he, he could simply be, you know, uh, commenting on the quality of the canapes here uh, on this expedition. <laughs> or he might be um, sort of coming back into consciousness. You're not sure. But uh, the aircraft is uh, continuing to plunge. Uh, can we? Can I use a style point to pull us up? <laughs> oh, you may add a style point to your die roll if you want to. You burn your style points; they provide extra dice for the roll to pull up the aircraft. Uh, all right. How many, uh, how uh, many would you like? Dice, to use? Extra dice or dice extra successes? Oh, no, oh, hello. Sorry. that's the worst. Wow. <laughs> okay. I was um, following Lehman's advice. Okay, that was not my fault. I was. That's like, right. Doing that was on. That's on me, everyone. It, it, I am so embarrassed. I, I believe that was the sound of a a UFO passing the passing you <laughs> on its way to the hollow earth. Yeah. Um, you could see the bug eyed monster staring out the window, just going. Rawr. I'm sorry. I panicked. I didn't mean to snap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, you can uh, with each style point you spend, you can uh, get. Uh, an extra dice to add to your roll. Oh, okay. Extra die. To, so if you want to burn right. all, whether you get four or five, you got four. Uh, you could you could add four dice to your three dice. Okay. Um, well, I've already rolled those three dice. So it would essentially be rolling two more after the fact if I wanted to burn two. Well, this is a this is a whole new round. This is a whole new one. All right. So yeah. uh, I will I will burn two so that I can uh, roll five all right. and 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 pray. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's once again, only two successes, <laughs> two successes. Oh, Hey, the, the aircraft is leveled out. You've Woo! actually got your, uh, uh, neither, uh, neither Edith nor, uh, Nell are plastered to the ceiling. They crash back down into their seats crash. Um, you're the best pilot ever. <laughs> Yay. I did it guys. I knew it. Ghosts, ghosts are real. Now, um, <laughs> have you actually climbed into the front seat or are you just like leaning over and holding the stick? Uh, I'm leaning over and holding the stick is my okay. Is, okay, that's that's gonna make it really rough when you're not working the the floor pedals on this aircraft. But all right, nope, that's that's fine. Uh, the aircraft wobbles this way and that as you pull back on the stick and try and steer the uh, the what's it called area aerolons in the in the wings. Um, uh, what are you doing now? What are you ladies up to now that the aircraft? is no longer plunging. We've leveled off. I'm sorry, I was experiencing problems. Well, yes, are, I saved the day. You you have, have, we, have, we, have we landed or are we still in the air? You are still in the air. Oh, I'm okay. not sure landing is necessarily what's going to happen next. Hmm. Um, but uh, you, you have not made contact with uh, terra firma or even terra incognita uh, at I'm this probably point. Rush into the cockpit to see what um, what 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 intarnation is happening. Well, the tarnation appears to be um, gentleman John is leaning over one of the two <laughs> seats and is holding on to the stick of the in the in front of the empty seat while the pilot uh, Jacques Marin is uh, slumped in his seat, uh, bleeding profusely from multiple gunshot wounds. <laughs> Dope. Um, <laughs> you know how to land this thing? We'll find out. <laughs> can you ask your, your friends what can't be seen? Maybe you can uh, conjure I, the ghost of uh, Amelia Earhart. No, wait, she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's too. It's too soon. There aren't enough dead pilots yet. Oh come on! There was World War One. You could summon Rick Tofen or um, oh, there we go. You know. <laughs> Wait, did he live Snoopy long enough? Yeah, like... you just gotta you gotta land this thing. Uh, I'll 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 use I'll use some of that there force. <laughs> okay, let's see what the options are here. Do 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 do. In the meantime, uh, I'm like in the cabin securing things to make sure that everything doesn't go flying all over the place, breaking the next time he does that. And I'm also making sure the bone map is on my person so that like if we crash or in, or end in, or in a horrible inferno when I run out, I've got it. So. And hold up, hold up. A an idea I'm not stealing from anything, but do we have an inflatable raft we can all get into? <laughs> well, one thing I will point out is that um, uh, Edith has a jack-of-all-trade skill. 
Oh, um, I do. Which uh, she has the same dexterity as you, but she doesn't get the minuses for using an un uh, a skill that she doesn't have. Just trying to use her attribute to do a skill. So Eden, she might. The ghosts are telling me that you don't just sort of naturally suck at things. <laughs> You, you, you were, you flew an airplane once. Yeah, the ghosts say that Edith flew an airplane once. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab. Lord, gentlemen, John's flying this thing. <laughs> I'm gonna grab Jock and get Jock out of the way so okay. that Edith Carruthers can help us not die. Okay. All right. Jock says, Ugh. "I'll be People. applying pressure." I don't know. Ghosts yeah. help me. <laughs> <laughs> Ghosts are about to get very real in this plane. Okay. Uh, I've got survival. Is. is that like a, can I, can I try to save him with that? Does that have a first um, I would say, well, most of that's like outdoor survival and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, uh, usually there's a first aid skill. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's the skill that uh, allows you to patch up people, but um, I don't know. survival I don't know. is like out, outdoors, uh, how to build a fire, how to build a shelter, Mm -hmm. Um, how to, uh, how to catch a fish, how to trap a rabbit, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, Not that's what, uh, no, but, uh, you can, you know, uh, take a wild roll at the problem if you care to. Um, <laughs> I would, uh, uh, tell you what, I'll, I'll let you use, uh, survival might be the kind of thing that tells you things like how to set a broken leg, you know, mm -hmm. uh, really super simple stuff. Um, According to my inventory, I have heavy pants, if that can be of use. <laughs> oh, I just remembered everybody has um, uh, a medical kit or hmm. first aid kit. So if you apply it, you know, and everybody has their own medical kit on them. So if you take his medical kit and apply it to him, you will get plus two dice, I believe it is, the rule says, to, Ooh, nice. your, to your first aid roll, which I think right now is only going to be two dice. Uh, so take it away. Catastrophe now. So, so, so just two, just two. No, you'll get. Um, I get four. Little four. Okay. That's three successes. Oh my goodness, that's Ooh. actually pretty good. Better than I, better than I thought. Okay. Um, She's you, doing a lot you, better than me tonight. Yeah, you're, you're, <laughs> uh, you, you managed to appropriately stuff things in the bullet holes and the other things, all the other things you're supposed to do when somebody's gravely injured by. Uh, Ballistic uh, trauma. Out um, of the way, David Copperfield. You gotta apply a tourniquet. I'm backing up. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly certain who Harry Houdini is the right magician <laughs> for this era, but all right. All right. Uh, we'll go with David Copperfield. You're totally going with David Copperfield. She's, she's referring to the Dickens character. Uh, oh, I see. Under, she, she knows my hard scrabble upbringing. Mm. <laughs> I, I was worried. She, at least she didn't call you David Blaine. I mean, mm. you know, let's let's thank goodness for small favors. All right, Edith, time for you to roll some dice. All right. If you would be so kind as to roll three dice, please, with no minuses. Yeah, I I, I wasted all my events pulling pulling tests for now inside. That's nothing. Okay, you got nothing. Okay, the aircraft begins. To, the aircraft begins to plunge again towards I, the deck. I, uh, I flew a different model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I now is the time on the this would be a good time to burn some of those style points and yes. get extra dice, which basically is what you do when you get the inflatable raft and you throw it out the window of the plane. That's just a whole bunch of style points getting burnt on the way to the ground. So since there is no inflatable raft, you're just going to burn some style points. Uh how many would you like to burn before uh you crash into the earth? I will burn two. All right. Go ahead and give me five dice, please. Okay, that's better. Three. Okay. Um, that's really good. You needed that to happen uh, because <laughs> you you can you've emerged from the cloud cover and see a sheet of ice in front of you. <laughs> um, you're fairly certain you should not be coming at it at a perpendicular angle. So you <laughs> haul back on the stick. And uh, the aircraft groans under the pressure of the, the, the G-forces. Um, everybody poops their pants just a little. Um, they never tell you that part. It happens. They never it tell happens. you that part on Top Gun, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, and uh, the aircraft comes down hard on its uh, two float pontoons. Let's see here. Which snap? 
off of the aircraft. Then the aircraft is now skittering across the ice on its belly, the propeller smacking into the ice, sending up sparks, and eventually stalling the engine out until the aircraft comes to a skidding to a halt there on the ice uh, and very mournfully leans over and touches one of its wingtips to the ice. Are we alive? Are we ghosts? <laughs> Anyone you walk away from, right? <laughs> I guess you'd be the expert there. Uh, how's, how's our how's our uh, our uh, erstwhile pilot? Uh, he is uh, not dead yet, contrary to what I expected to have happen. Um, right. But uh, he is unconscious, having been stitched badly by uh, German machine gun bullets. Uh, do we do we do we have anything that we can sort of uh, drag him along on? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, the uh, the aircraft uh, does have uh, some small supplies in it. If you were to say, for instance, um, uh, use some of the um, uh, I, there's probably a parachute in this thing. Um, All right, there's, I'll you, strap it to a parachute and and make a sort of a, a, a air sap sort of you know sling to essentially be able to you know haul them wherever we're going. But uh, you could probably use the, the the various cargo straps and cargo nets that are in the aircraft to to rig up after a while uh, some sort of um, what would you call it some sort of a uh, like I said sling maybe put the mattresses from the uh, the the chairs stretch the, uh, the not the mattresses but the cushions on the chairs and sort of uh, work them into some sort of a, a thing you could lay them down on or you know whatever. Uh, Seems like a lot of bother. Can't we just leave them here and come back later? From where? I mean, you guys get out and you look around and... Yeah, this is a one-way flight at this it's, point. It's yeah. kind of wall-to-wall -wall fuck all out here. I mean, it's just, you're looking out and it's just, you know, dark, which is odd because it was daylight before and it would, you know, um, mm. it was, uh, it, it seems really dark for some reason. Maybe it's just the intense cloud cover. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the terrain is basically sort of Arctic ice sheet. It's all, uh, bits of it are pushed up and cracked up to form ridges and, and bluffs and things. But, uh, it is just, I, uh, it is just ice pack. You don't see anything that looks like actual land, uh, or, or stone sticking up through it. And I've got a lot of this guy's blood on me, and I don't need more ghosts chasing after me at this point. So it's in my interest to keep I, him I am, alive. I am, all right, all right. I suppose uh, worse comes to worse, we can turn this adventuring party into the Donner party. <laughs> hey so, you, so you're bringing a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> There's that thing where guys escape from a gulag, and they'll bring the two guys escape and bring a third guy with them that they. They deliberately pick a third person who they don't think will survive for very long. So they'll be sure they can have enough supplies for the escape. It's That's called, pretty great. It's called bringing a sandwich. Mm. Yeah. Yowzers. Yowzers. So that's, that's how you get ghosts, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want ghosts? Because that's how you get ghosts. All right. I'm, I'm strapping on my Arctic gear so that I don't uh, get hit with a whole bunch of frostbite rolls later. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, I want to put on the specified underwear that's in my inventory. <laughs> oh, let me yeah. assure you guys that just sitting in the aircraft, you guys were dressed like that. I already okay. have underwear. Okay, yeah. You oh. guys were absolutely balaclavas, big fur coats, giant wool mittens, mm -hmm. giant, heavy pants. Yes, the They're giant five wool, pound pants. The wool pants, the the rubberized boots that go up to you know the fur lined. Yeah, you guys mm -hmm. are decked out like. Um, uh, like uh, uh, what's his name? Shackleton, like Ernest Shackleton, mm -hmm. and his boys on the endurance, because it's it's cold in them. Their airplanes, added to the fact you're flying along a couple hundred miles an hour, and the air is already freezing. Yeah, it's super fucking cold. Just as just as long as we're talking the endurance and not the terror, because I don't know what no, no, you've no. been watching recently. No, okay. they don't. They, they, the thing I always love about the terror is they didn't dress well, real well. I don't know if they did. I haven't seen the Terry yet, but when I read about the, the the Franklin expedition, it's like, yeah, we could dress like the Eskimos who've been living up here for 
thousands of years, but they're bloody savages. Everyone put on your knee socks and your <laughs> pith, pith helmets are all yeah, we need. <laughs> yeah, uh, put on the stuff that you would be tootling around the North Sea, and I've got a wool jacket. Yeah, good bully for you, asshole. Um, <laughs> Yeah, they, they did not dress up like Norwegian and Russian whalers, you know, who'd been up in those waters forever. They stuck to these, what's their jury? Out of uniform, sir. So they all went up there and they're literally in knee socks. Look, and look, 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 look. It's reasonable when you think about it, okay? <laughs> just think about it. No one's yeah. attacking knee socks here, Molly. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, like, I mean, what are you going to do? You just think about it. You have to maintain your identity in times of crisis. I, I, I see that I've offended the... Uh, the resident Victorian. No, I am not at all. I'm the, like, um, the, they were probably idiots. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, based on all the corpses we found, yeah, and all the corpses we didn't find, yeah, no. things didn't no. go so well. Um, even Frankenstein had a wool, had a fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, yes, he did. God damn it! And <laughs> as far as I know, he could be in the neighborhood. I mean, this is where he got yeah. off, right? Oh snap! Yeah, I mean, he's kind of old still, but yeah. <laughs> Like that guy gets older. He's made he out of corpses. Only, he was only like 30 when he made the monster. He could be 70 and living on the ice. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant the monster could be up here. This oh, of Frankenstein, not the Frank. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I meant the Frankenstein monster could be up here. Mm. Frankenstein right. feast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, junior, as they called him, yeah. around the lab. Um, Inevitably, Adam in the crappy movie name. Yeah. Uh, oh, right. Well, uh, yeah. All right, let's hit this ice sheet, guys. Come on, right. it's adventure Woo! time. It is adventure time. <laughs> Come on, grab your colleagues. Well, we've we've gotten through the moral dilemma. We have our sandwich. Yeah. We decided not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the question is, which direction do you go? Uh, do we uh, have a compass? I, oh yeah. I sally. I sally forth. Every one of you have a uh, have these amazingly cool wrist compasses that I oh. found. Like I'm going to consult the map to see if it's any help. Okay. We, we have a map. I don't know if it's going to be a useful map, but... You did have a map. Uh, you have the air charts. The aerial charts that you took showing where you were taking off from and your airspeed and navigation and all that kind of good stuff. But Which shows where your planned course was to Jotunheim. Um, but uh, with all this flying around and dodging these Germans, you're not quite sure where... You are now. <laughs> hmm. But um, again, the compass will probably help, except for the part where the needle is just spinning no, around. No. In oh, no. Everybody's needles are spinning around. So if you're overheated, you can just hold it up and it'll be like a little fan. I'll tap, I'll tap, on, I'll tap on the glass to see if that helps. Uh, it does not. Oh. It jiggles the uh, arrows uh, in, in an amusing manner. Uh, mm. But that's about it. Uh, I'll look around for any ghosts that might be messing with our uh, compasses. <laughs> Your ESP uh, does not tell you that you are uh, surrounded by anything uh, supernatural. Uh, you do not feel the touch of the ether. Yes, or the, yes. Uh, ghosts, the ghosts are traditionally, traditionally non-ferrous. I know this, yes. <laughs> um, can, yeah. I, can I use my survival skill now? Oh, yeah. Yes. Go ahead and give me a roll on your survival skill. Okay. Uh, uh, and that would, um, and can I use my tracking to see if anyone has been around here? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. So that, so my rating is five and my average is plus two. Okay. Two plus. All right. So that's, um, uh, you would normally get two without rolling any dice. You'd have two successes, uh -huh. roll me one die and that'll tell me whether you get three successes. If you want to take the average, otherwise you roll all five dice. Oh, I'll just roll five, I guess. I don't know. I was just asking you how many dice to roll. Well, sometimes in this game when something is super easy and your average gives you a number of successes better than the thing you're mm. doing, you don't have to roll the dice. You can just say, I did it. You know? Oh, no. I don't but think that's me. Not in, the, not in this scenario. No, no, not right now. Not like this. <laughs> I have three successes. Wow, I'm just I'm like she's doing she's doing my work for me. So she has three successes out of five. All right. You uh, are looking around and um uh the sky at the moment is a blank slate. There are no <laughs> stars to navigate by. Mm. Um because of the the, the this sort of fog or whatever it is. Um but 
uh, you are fairly certain that the sky in that direction is brighter mm. than the sky in this other direction. And based on the time that you know you came out of this thing, you're thinking maybe that um, uh, that way. Uh, well, there's two. You know, that way towards the bright light or brighter part of the sky. Um, and certainly, you would have seen some of this when you first entered the, the cloud. There's a, a brightness. There was a brightness in front of the aircraft and a darkness behind it in the cloud bank. Um, uh, and that's including the first time the plane went in and then turned around, came out, and saw Nazis and flew back in. Um, that might indicate the direction that the, the bone map indicated you were supposed to go. If you go the opposite direction, you might exit the cloud bank and you'd end up going towards the edge of the ice sheet. Uh, the problem with that direction is that your boat sank. And there's definitely no getting on that boat. Plus, mm -hmm. there were Nazis with airplanes. Airplanes, I note, that did not have pontoons on the bottom of them that had taken off from somewhere, which suggests that maybe there are even more Nazis and perhaps even uh, the evil uh, Professor uh, Von, I think it was Von Falkenberg, I think is when I named him. Uh, mm -hmm. Your nemesis from two episodes ago. Yeah, the, that the jerk. vile fiend. Conrad, <laughs> Conrad von Falkenberg, uh, who has been uh, trying to wrestle uh, the map away from you guys ever since uh, ever since uh, that uh, that Thorsten guy's manner with all the commandos and their white jackets attacking the party and machine gunning up the place. I learned all that from my survival role. No, I mean, <laughs> well, that's, that's a great role. I love you. Your, your survival role gave you a nice flashback full of exposition. You know, that's great. So going uh, towards the coast might not be good. Going uh, deeper towards the light might be the only option because it definitely doesn't. It probably doesn't have Nazis or uh, sinking ships. Uh, it might. It could possibly lead towards Jotunheim. Uh, I'll explain all this to my. Fellows, and that is ask true. what their thoughts are. Loose Nazis do sink ships. Yeah, I've I've been looking for Jotunheim my entire life. I'm not turning back now. Mm, excellent. I, I I like the way you think. I think we should head towards where it's a little bit brighter and a little bit lighter. All right, go into the light, Carol Ann. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, let's see, here. Edith. You still have your glasses with you. You have not. You have yet to pull a. Uh, I'm, you fished them out of the wreckage of the aircraft. You have yet to pull <laughs> a, a, a Velma Digley or whatever yet. Um, but that's that undoubtedly is coming up later. Yes. And you guys begin this horrible death march across the. I mean, this horrible march across the ice. And it's miserable. And this is the part where we have, uh, you know, a montage. Mm. Because rather than role play out three days crossing the ice, building roll for mont Roll for montage, everyone. Yeah, yeah we're not <laughs> playing Warhammer. Yeah. <laughs> you guys montage your ways across the ice. There's some very dour music probably involving a lot of bass cellos. Um, mm. As you cross the ice, building snow forts, listening to poor old um, Jacques Marin moan quietly in his uh, in his uh, sled slash gurney that you've rigged up out of the bits of the aircraft. Oh, not a happy man. Not not happy at all. Uh, Does, you, did we bring any booze or anything? Um, I uh, I can only imagine that some of you did. Um, <laughs> my, sh my champagne flute. <laughs> yeah, it's broken. I'm just... No! <laughs> No, what? <laughs> this is worse than death. You'll have to drink directly from the bottle. No. <laughs> but how can I see the little bubbles? That's half the experience. Um, how can it oxygenate? The tin cup I inevitably have, I'll hand it over if he's just really salty about it. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Thank you. Uh, you guys um, chew your emergency supplies and your your pemmican. Uh, three days pass on the ice, 
uh, you guys uh, eat a lot of your be- eat these rations because oh my god, it's cold and there's you know you go on half rations you start to you would start to uh, go downhill pretty fast because you burn calories like crazy out here in the cold. Are, are, are we are we perceiving sort of like a day and night cycle or is the fog and whatnot making it sort of hard to tell? Well, that's very interesting because the light doesn't move. You're walking hmm. into the light and you know you got watches on and you know and and. Uh, they're all the watches in this area. Their era, they're all winding watches. There's no battery watches in this at ten, and you're keeping time. But the light, which fills the sky in front of you, um, compared to what's behind you, which is much darker, uh, that light is. Uh, it doesn't move. It doesn't move like a sunset uh, or anything like that. It stays uh, sort of weirdly brightly illuminated in front of you. That's that's odd. <laughs> I'll opine. Um, on the third day, you guys see looming out of the darkness in front of you what appears to be a ship, a multi-masted sailing ship stuck in the ice. Hmm. That's no moon. Uh, like, mm, like a like. Can 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 we get a little more? Uh... Like, it's like a it's like a 19th century uh, sailing vessel made out of wood. The the ship you came up here in the Leif Erikson was also made of wood. Arctic exploration vessels at this time period were still being made out of wood hulls and had sails on them and such because the wood would give uh, and not you know blow. It, it was it was better for when the ice caught you up. Um, wood did better for some reason in ice conditions than uh, did steel hulls. Um, so a, plenty of ships that would come up here are like whalers that are still coming up here. Uh, yeah, a lot of them are um, are still wooden hulled vessels. And this looks like one. It's got, uh, unlike the Leif Erikson, the Leif Erikson had a, a, a smokestack for its coal-powered engines. But this one just has uh, some masts uh, sticking up uh, with cross those cross beams. Uh, there's some lovely tatters of sail, just sort of mm. wafting mm. in the uh, Arctic winds. How wind. much like a ghost pirate ship does it look like? Like on a scale of normal <laughs> to ghost pirate ship, like where where would it fall? Um, uh, yeah, it's somewhere. It's uh, I, I'd say it's um, uh, more than Scooby Doo, but less than Venture Brothers. Cool. Cool. Right. Ooh, oh, that's, that is a very, very yeah. precise and, and yeah. helpful yeah, metric. Right. Um, does it does it look like it's been sitting here for however many decades? Like, is the wood rotted or? Is oh it... yeah, it, it's it's okay. looking kind of black uh, and kind of moldy and peeled, and there's a lot of raw wood, and the paint has been blasted off of it by the winds. And uh, oh, that, there's the name of it, Severus. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds wholesome. Let's <laughs> let's see if let's see if there's food. <laughs> um, there, let's uh, see if there's rum. The ship, uh, as you go on board and walk across the creaking decks, um, I does don't know not. If I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am. I'm taking copious notes. I don't. I don't know. I, I might be okay out here. I. Right? I don't. I think Nell's kind of probably like that place looks right kind of spooky. I don't know if I'm going up in there. It is. It is definitely spooky. There is no doubt about its spookiness. Edith, uh, cover others, please to give me four dice, a roll of four dice uh, on your intelligence. <laughs> oh no. One. One. Huh. <laughs> As someone who has been known something about you know Arctic research and exploration. Uh, you would remember that the Severus was the sister ship of the Terror. Mm. <laughs> Congratulations, you've discovered part of the Franklin Expedition, missing since 1848. This is a bit like finding the Donner Party when you're trapped in the mountains during a blizzard. Uh, in Also in the 1840s, I believe. And go, mm. oh, we've made it to Truckee Lake. We'll be fine now. Oh, no, we won't. <laughs> Look, guys, if there are any ghosts, I can wrangle them. That's my thing. Uh, well, let me assure you that if there are ghosts, uh, are you going down into the ship? 
Well, oh, I, I am. Mean, this is such a discovery. Well, if, there's a chance, if there's a chance for rum. There's thrill seeking. This is not the thrills you were hoping for. You were, <laughs> you were hoping for like a polar bear with chainsaws for hands. Oh, no. I, um, I don't I'm trying to find a, like, I just think she's scared of ghosts, but I guess right. if she's cajoled, like. Well, somebody's got to stay with uh, Jacques. We can't get him up on the deck. You know, the ship is sitting, listing in the ice. So um, you'd have to haul him up onto that deck. So maybe mm -hmm. if you just pull the, 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 the litter over under the eaves of the ship and yeah, you can just guard the exit. I think I will. And I th think I'll take some loose pieces of wood and build a nice little campfire. Which you can do for the first time in quite a while. Mm -hmm. Up until this point, you guys have been building little snow um, uh, shelters and Ooh. just huddling. Bummer. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll toast my toast my, my boot heels by a uh -huh. fire and just let them handle these spooky pirate ghosts. The crew of zombies leap out because you have <laughs> desecrated their, their tomb by <laughs> taking wood from it to build a fire. No. But go ahead. Are you were saying, Edith? Okay, what was uh, it? Because this this seems like a situation in which it's going to come up shortly. Um, I thought that we talked about changing my flaw to a uh, curious instead of poor vision. Oh, all right. Uh, that is true. Uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and put that on your character sheet. I'll oh, right. It. I'll change it on yours. You did want to go with curious. You have to get into this. Because <laughs> this, this, this seems like this seems like an area where curiosity is going to be a thing. This so. is going to yeah. This is going to be an area where curiosity is going to be. You and the cat are going to have a problem. So you're saying Richard more... Pete's never been killed by ghosts before. <laughs> you're, you're saying this looks more like a, a curious situation than a hedonistic one. Is that what you're telling yes, me, Scott? Yes, yes, I am telling you this is more curious. Dang it. Um, let's see here. Oh, sexy pretty... lady ghosts. Yeah, they could talk. yeah. The British Navy <laughs> was renowned for the number of sexy <laughs> girls they brought on the boats. Um, <laughs> Um, actually, what they were renowned for was bringing dresses so that the men could perform uh, plays on the ships in drag, which is the most British Navy thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, it's up there. <laughs> yep. Um, rum, sodomy, and the lash. Oh, yeah. So, um, sure enough, you guys, you get onto the ship and um, very quickly discover that um, the ship is... Uh, well, there is no food. There is uh, the, not the even stock. one blistering barnacle. Not even one blistering barnacle. <laughs> there are, however, a rather unfortunate number of human bones that have show the marks of having been carefully, carefully scraped clean of their meat. Um, there is also there is all the food is gone. Big pile of bones. Down, you know, you you discover it at one point, throwing open a uh, uh, one particular uh, cargo hold door and finding, oh dear, you know, that seems like a lot of bones. Um, but eventually, what you find is um, uh, in the captain's cabin in the rear of the ship, you find a skeleton propped up in a chair behind a big writing desk. Facing the door, uh, uh, with its empty eye sockets and uh, head full of uh, head full of bad British dentistry, staring you right in the eyes, um, he appears to be wearing uh, warm clothes, but not necessarily a, uh, any kind of a captain's uniform. Um, uh, there's a gaping hole directly through the skull, and a flintlock pistol lying on the deck at his feet. I, I guess I guess he took the easy way out. Doesn't look that easy, but <laughs> I suppose it was that, or like figure out which foot he was going to eat first. Yeah. Uh, are there any uh, uh, ledgers or rudders? I don't know what you're supposed to sort of you know start. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's log. Captain's log. If you there is a captain's log, and the captain's log. Um, uh, eventually stops being the captain's log and it's somebody else's log. I mean, if you start from the back, the last entries are, um, um, the last entries are this 
half literate scrawl, no more piggies to eat. <laughs> and oh. um, but before that is some other handwriting, you know, saying, you know, supplies are running low, you know, supplies are gone, you know, we've disinterred the the the, the, the we've disinterred the dead in the hopes to stave off starvation, you know. Uh, hope is running out, and then there's like another handwriting that says basically like every man for himself, and then the last one is no more piggies to eat. And like there's like a cut to catastrophe now, just toasting a piece of pemmican over the peaceful campfire, <laughs> <laughs> crackling wood, and like you know, just like her kind of she like spits, and then she starts telling like yet another lighthearted and amusing anecdote to the moaning captain. <laughs> uh, I will. Uh, would you, uh, would you my, care my... to unravel your ESP powers in here? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm motivated by my greed as I am. This. This ledger's, you know, this catalog is a historical artifact, you know, so it's got to be worth something to some, you know, uh, museum or whatnot. So uh, if there's something here, then the ghost will tell me if there's more. So, okay. Okay. This turns out to be a terrible idea. That what you get is the. No, my greed led me astray. You get the fast forward montage of all the starving guys on the ship murdering each other, uh, breaking up into gangs where first they, you know, a group of them take over the ship with firearms and hold the rest of the crew hostage and then kill some of them. And then the gang turns on itself and then they constantly break up into smaller and smaller groups. Some men jump over the side and flee out into the ice, never to be seen again. Uh, but eventually this, this um, uh, game of musical cannibals settles down where there's nobody left to eat and the last most vicious, savage, and um, treacherous cannibal who has betrayed all his fellows um, uh, in order to get the, be the last, the last uh, uh, meal into the pot or the guy who never got in the pot. Um, he eventually ends up blowing his brains out here in the ship uh, rather than face the prospect of starvation. It's this, no this, good. This montage uh, winds up being a, uh, a a backdoor pilot for uh, you know you've heard of gangs of New York now <laughs> see gangs of Long Pork. <laughs> <laughs> wow, um, you 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 tinkle a little, you know. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's awful. Look, these <laughs> these glad, heavy pants just have seen a lot. Just be glad this wasn't Call of Cthulhu. All right, just be glad this wasn't <laughs> Call of Cthulhu, where I'd be making your old sand loss for this event. You know, yeah. um, it's no fun. You're not doing that again on this ship. Not ever know how. However, <laughs> you do know that some of the crew set off across the ice um, with a few meager supplies um, and uh, disappeared before the ship turned to cannibalism. They they attempted to uh, get, you know, they, they, they went into towards the direction of the the brightness in the sky, uh, but that and that definitely happened before the boat uh, descended into murder and madness. Uh, uh, this uh, this uh, antique uh, flintlock is it uh, still functional? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, um, the one thing about this place Yoink. is it's it's dry. I mean, the ship is dry. Uh, the the cold keeps everything relatively dry. Um, uh, the uh, some of the exterior of the ship's taking a beating from the winds and stuff. But um, if you're looking around and want to police up the the cutlasses and uh, oh, I totally do. Uh, bail, <laughs> the, those uh, bail, gaffing hooks or whatever and stuff that might be on the ship or knives or whatever. Yeah, there's there's you know all kinds of stuff like that laying around that you could possibly police up, including. Um, you know, uh, there's the uh, a small. There's probably a keg of powder and some shot, things like that, laying around. Um, you can't eat it, so it's not there. <laughs> some of the there's belts that have been boiled and chewed. You know, but um, <laughs> I'm not even remotely I'll, kidding. I'll, 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 I'll... I'll take I'll take the uh, the the, the uh, remaining flintlock and uh, and uh, when we head back to Nell, I'll, I'll give it to her in case she wants to start up a pirate routine next. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. 
I've taken a couple cutlasses because the, the, the adventures are more exciting with photographs. So, <laughs> Yeah, everything's better with cutlasses. I think we've learned that. <laughs> um, you guys clamber out of the boat. What do you, what do you tell Nell? There was uh, not much of interest on board after all. We could have told no food. That. <laughs> <laughs> no food. No. Mm-mm. I mean, the food. To, the food to ghost ratio is, shall we say, not optimal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I suppose you could have taken the dead guy and boiled him. I mean, he's like he's more of a mummy than a skeleton. You could have boiled him and totally softened up, but you know. That would require, and you got wood, you know. Look, our previous episode had a lot of like discourse into horse kimchi. I don't really want to get into like ways of preparing like mummy marrow. (laughs) That was my bad. All right, we'll we'll stay away from the whole mummy preparation thing and move on. Although eating eating mummies is very Victorian, so yeah, it really is. Oh God, what the what was wrong with those people? (laughs) Everything. (laughs) <laughs> Any good resources out there? <laughs> All right, so you guys spend the night here in the in the shelter of the ship, actually having a fire for a change. Seems yeah. seems good. Yeah. Okay. I can only imagine that there's a marvelous little long distance shot of the 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 cryptic outline of this boat against the stark white uh, terrain with this little tiny fire glitter, guttering in the dark next to it, throwing shadows up against the wooden hull as you guys spend the night. All right. You guys wake up. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> you're, 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 Better you're, than the alternative. You're not, you never wake up. You, no, no. you wake up and, um, uh, you know, uh, just set off again. However, at this point, you are on your uh, first day without food. Uh, so everyone gets to take a, uh, a non-lethal hit Ugh. to their character. Um, I believe you put that on, you mark that off, I believe, against your body or health. You mark that off against yeah. your health. Um, one non-lethal. Let's see here. Ugh. And... Guys, got... if we don't find food, I think we're going to be in trouble. Call me crazy. <laughs> yeah, that could be. That we could need to be... find like a narwhal and just like chow down. <laughs> <laughs> narwhal, narwhal. Okay. Um, anyways, you guys are, or the thing that's uh, you, as you're going through this next day, you are beginning to notice something. The light in front of you is getting brighter. Mm. Um, you're now starting to make out what appears to be uh, the disk of a sun in the sky. And as you get uh, stomp along through this day, it becomes sort of obvious that um, it's not traversing the sky in front of you. It's just sitting there. Hmm. Hour after hour. Like a like God's flashlight. <laughs> the fog is uh, thinning out a little bit. That's not natural, is it? I'm not a scientist. I'm no man of science. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a senator right before they say some <laughs> bullshit about climate change. Well, I'm no scientist. <laughs> <laughs> is that what they call the midnight sun? Oh, right. Like with the Arctic and the circles. Yeah, okay. That's, I'm I'll sure that's it. what it is. That's, yeah. Reality restored. <laughs> no reason Thank to Thank goodness we solved that mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Wait, did they all just accept this wisdom from catastrophe? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're practically I'll a point out that, um, Edith, you uh, have enough navigation skill that you know that's not what the midnight sun is at all. <laughs> not even a little bit of the that is not even a little bit um of what but we're the midnight all hungry, sun. okay? So, so and you're like thinking it. you're thinking maybe we can eat the sun. <laughs> is what you're thinking. Um since uh, the dawn of time, man has longed to eat the sun. <laughs> um 
as that's you're all documented and all true, as you are uh, going across the landscape, um, you trudge on until you are exhausted, and um, eventually, uh, you know, uh, sort of like, oh, I can't move anymore. And the sun hasn't moved at all. Guys, um, you've been watching your watch. Hours have gone by. Uh, mm. What's um, hmm? This a mirage? It's probably time to try and build yourselves a sort of igloo shelter and a shelter out here. Can I have thought to bring some wood to build on the fire? Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, I was looking at the the, the weight that the various characters can carry. Mm -hmm. And whereas Edith and uh, Gentleman Johnny are lightweights. Yeah, um, academics, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, Nell can drag as much as 250 pounds, uh, you know, <laughs> of, of stuff. And I presume that I'm gonna go ahead and say that you guys could have used the ship's carpentry tools mm -hmm. and the ship's wood to mm -hmm. build a much better sled or sledge <laughs> uh, to drag what's his name along and load that sledge up with as much wood as you needed to, to maybe even mm -hmm. some canvas that you tore down off the sails to make it so you can cover. Mm -hmm. Rather than have to build a roof on your igloo, you just build the walls and you put the canvas over it so you can camp better. Like right old Conestoga wagon. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So you're definitely going to be able to, 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 you know, get yourself uh, settled down in there and that uh, in, in your little shelters more easily because you've grabbed some hammers and nails and maybe it's all like a 19th century, you know, uh, uh, drill, hand drill. Yeah. Stars, and, things like that. Some of them, some of the uh, instruments have this black crusty stuff on it. I'm sure it's nothing. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we we're just gonna, uh, we're just gonna power through that. As uh, as we've been as we've been traveling, how what's the weather been like? Has it been the same the whole time? Has it have we been snowed on? Have there been like well, has wind picked up? Or is I'm it I'm gonna go ahead and say that that it's not impossible for you guys to have a thermometer with you. Um uh, over the last couple of days, the temperature has gone up. It is still, you know, zero or minus 10 or whatever, but it was minus, you know, it's like minus 20 when you started. Uh, it's now closer to zero or, or uh, 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 it's jiggling around that temperature. Fair the enough. Spring is coming. Aslan's on the prowl. Wait, sorry, wrong, <laughs> wrong heading. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Right. What's that? Yeah. Winter is leaving. <laughs> yeah. or something thank god the green um, green. anyways um uh so we make our sort of our our makeshift make sort of camp. bivouac okay oh yeah we totally do bivouac okay um while you are camping down for the night um mm -hmm. you've been doing your best to look after our our captain here uh Edith, you're the one with the jack of all trades. Give me some rolls there. See how uh, Captain Jacques, Captain Jack, okay. Um, <laughs> Captain Jacques is doing. Uh, your intelligence the is four. For the, okay. Yeah, your intelligence is four. Give me four dice. Three. Oh, wow. Okay, you have not let him die, which is good. Um, considering that, well, considering that you have nothing to, to work with here and it's frozen out. Maybe the hypothermia makes him bleed less. I don't know. He is not dead, which is super. That that's fucking miracle. All right. <laughs> um however you've burned two of your medical kits. You're down to two of your first aid kits uh over this in this process. Ugh. Anyways, you change the I mean you change the bandages, throw those guys out, whatever. Um so you guys are settling in to uh, hit your uh, uh, sleep, your, your next, I don't know what you'd call it, a night. It hasn't gotten any darker, but time keeps rolling by. Um, everybody give me a perception roll, please. Ruh -roh. I have three successes. Okay. Same, three. Five. Five. Okay. Ooh, you wake up first. Um, you um, <laughs> hear uh, 
hear the sound of something crunching mm -hmm. around in the snow outside your little shelter. And you hear the sound of huge uh, nostrils sucking in air um, outside somewhere. And perhaps a very deep and low growl uh, sort of rises up. Um, it sounds like something big. A polar bear, perhaps? I should wake the other two up, but I want to peer out and get a look at this thing first. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and give me a uh, two rolls. One is uh, stealth, uh, which you have six dice in, uh, average of three, and then give me another per uh, another perception. Three for stealth. Okay, excellent. Ah, this die won't stop rolling. Okay. Damn. Seven for perception. All yeah. right. What do you see out the um, the sort of flap of the, the little snow bunker that you've made for yourselves? You look out is a pair of of enormous cat-like creatures. Um, they're huge. They stand about five to six feet at the shoulder, uh, roughly the size of a rhinoceros. Um, they uh, have white fur uh, with some black speckles mixed in to sort of break up their, uh, their profile. Um, they have short bobcat-like tails and huge, huge fangs that slip from their the, the top of their mouth out past their lower mandible and they are currently sniffing the bandages you threw out from changing the bandages on uh the gentleman who was wounded they are sniffing those up and growling uh low to each other it's the toad's dad <laughs> it is the toad's <laughs> great granddad finally <laughs> What do you do? Pull back into the into the shelter and nudge nudge Nell and John and now John, there are creatures outside. Yeah, no balls. <laughs> it's a lot of meat on them. <laughs> I like that I'm presented with you two apex predators, and your only thought is we can eat these fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, everyone's now at two non-lethal wounds mm. apiece. For having been without food for three days, I think this is your third day of not having food. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm hungry. Let's let's <laughs> let's eat it. Let's eat a smile on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Brano burgers, only <laughs> only pointier. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. Well, then uh, let me just make a quick roll here. Okay. All right. Um. You guys have uh, come up with a, I would say, a, a cunning, a cunning plan. <laughs> uh, well, you've got a, you've got a cunning, th uh, a thing you'd like to accomplish, a cunning goal. Um, how would you like to, <laughs> to get to that cunning goal? Is I guess what I'm really asking. Shoot, shoot, shoot some smilodons and then eat them. <laughs> that's that's a marvelous idea. Um, right now, you're inside your little uh, shelter. Um, there is one entrance and exit to the shelter, which has a, a cloth, a, a sailcloth flap over it to keep the uh, wind out. Who wants to stick their head out first? I, I don't think that's a good idea, partner. I, 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 Catastrophe now advocates for just letting the cats do what they wish and seeing, like, let the cats make the first move. Like, they don't, they're more scared of us than we are of them. I mean, are they hungrier than us? You know, they, might, they might not even know we're in here. A giant claw bursts through the um, <laughs> flap and begins padding around inside the uh, shelter for you. The, mm -hmm. the claw, the, 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 the pad of this thing is roughly the size of a manhole cover and mm -hmm. appears to have uh, steak knives stuck <clears throat> between the fuzzy parts. It just, <clears throat> you know, mm -hmm. let's see what he, see if he grabs anything. <laughs> 
Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, all you guys leap back from this thing as it's it's reaching around. You know, um, the captain doesn't do any leaping. So mm. at some point, that claw just grabs the mm. sledge and pulls it out of the shelter through the hole, um, tearing mm. the, the cloth off. Oh, it just disappears out the hole. Maybe oh, man, we... that'll be enough for them. Yeah, that's how it always works. <laughs> I, they're just going to have to get a taste for man flesh. You if think they're busy they'll... eating him, then they might not notice if we try to shoot them in the head. Hmm, that's a fair point. And we okay. should, I don't know, save our friend? I don't know. Let's let's eat some, I just want to eat them. I'm so hungry, guys. Guys, <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> Oh, God's creatures is just trying to survive. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, let's see how sanguine you are when they get done with that guy. All right. I take, I <laughs> like, like a Frenchman's going to fill up two saber tooth tigers. You know? yeah. <laughs> with no, especially when there's no sauce. You know, no. Um, that's the key to most French cooking. Yeah. Um, you ate him without garlic? What are you, mad? Yeah, um, uncivilized cats. Um, no, things are not going well for the captain out there. You guys mm -hmm. can see through the door that, um, yeah, they're they're in the process of dividing that whole thing up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, <laughs> you guys got the big game rifles. Uh, mm -hmm. Leland, yeah. your pistol is just big enough to get their attention. Mm -hmm. uh, my Colt Woodsman? Is that my new yes, thing? Yes, yes. It is a tiny little twenty-two caliber pistol <laughs> with a silencer oh. on it. Now, I will tell you this. When the guys on the the... the what was it called? The Italia, this uh, this this airship that crashed in the Arctic uh, ten years ago, nineteen the nineteen twenties. They crashed in the Arctic, and one of the things they ate up there was a polar bear that came into their camp, and you know they shot it dead. And they did shoot a polar bear dead with a tiny little shitty Italian pocket handgun. Which ah, I, there's precedent. Which I do not know how they did that. I mean, it, it's <laughs> the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. They're the Polar bears are all kinds of mean and huge. And they took this little gun that belonged in a woman's handbag and killed it. And I just, I do not get that at all. So it's not impossible, but all right. that's one of the big game rifles. The ladies, Wait, I will, I will, I will take, I will take not impossible. And uh, yes, I will uh, uh, attempt to, to, to start squeezing, squeezing off a round. Okay. All right. Um, uh, the good thing news is, is that you have a silencer. Um, yes. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and um, let's actually let me ask this question. Everyone, check your initiatives. Who's got the highest initiative? I'm at six. Seven. Six. All right. Okay. Uh, first person who gets to go is Rachel. Okay, I'm going to make sure that I'm like setting up properly with my hunting rifle, taking aim. You know, I got I got time to to set this thing up. And since they're distracted, and then I am going to open up. All right. The uh, let's see here. You're at short range with this thing, uh, so there's no minuses to the attack. You're aiming. Uh, let's go ahead and give you plus two uh, to uh, taking the time to aim. Anyone who takes time to aim, uh, go ahead and uh, fire, please. Use uh, two extra dice. Two okay. extra. Dice. And it's so it's the seven for rifles plus two extra dice. Yes. Cool. Well, hold on. Let me check this. Your character has yes seven plus two. What'd you roll? How many? How many? Five. Five successes. Okay. Blam! You shoot the tiger. Uh, the tiger. Uh, <laughs> the saber tooth tiger. Turns around and looks super pissed. Um, you've <laughs> absolutely got its full and undivided attention now. It is comes right in and starts sticking itself in through the the, the ragged hole it busted in Fort Snow, uh, and is uh, apparently going to be trying to get in and uh, get in, uh, get in at you guys. Uh, Molly, your turn. Um, you are also aiming. Uh, you and uh, Lehman, so you'll both get plus two dice. So the rifle is four. Your firearms, Molly or, or uh, Nell, is eight uh, plus two. So you get 14 dice. Hachi machi. Okay. 
Um, is, well, can, can you paint me a word picture here? Like if I fire this, am I going to be just firing into a blocked? Do you, like, at this, if you fire this uh, at this point, you're probably going to end up with this guy stuck in the, in the doorway, but getting out through the snow walls is not that difficult. Okay. But I mean, am I going to, is any, is it going to harm anyone else for me to fire this thing? I guess I won't no. have time to think about this. All right. No. Why am I even? I'm no. presuming that you guys are all at the back wall as far away from the floor as possible. <laughs> getting out of the knife claw range. Yeah. <laughs> Eight successes. Eight successes. Oh, that's much better. Okay, let me let me roll his defenses. Not so great. All right, so four. Uh, let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Body is wow. Okay, damn. Okay, um, blam. Uh, Lehman, take your shot, please. All right, ba -ba 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 -ba. that is uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five successes. Okay, you guys fire, blam, 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 blam. Um, the uh, uh, <laughs> you know, this thing comes to a halt, uh, uh drops its claw into the whatever you know, wool blanket you were sitting on, and kind of gives the whole thing a tug towards itself and then just stops. Um, dead as a hammer, blocking the doorway. Mm. Well, I guess you got your wish, and you can have a big old kitty sandwich later. Uh, it's got a friend. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear its friend sound off outside. Mm. I guess. Is the friend going to come after us, or does it seem to be scared? Yeah, is it a scared or like an angry? This is the Smilodon. He's the these guys are the master of their world. They're not scared of shit. Um, okay. Uh, this guy, uh, the first thing this thing does is um, st uh, start. Uh, it you can see giant knife claws come through the top of the sailcloth you've got over the the over your your little cover. Rips through the sailcloth, jerks the whole sailcloth off of the top of your little snow fort. Mm. You are now exposed to the sky. Uh, the wall around this thing is only like three feet tall or so, maybe four feet at the most. You know, it's just something you'd put together for the night. It's a small area to conserve the the space that you're heating up. Mm -hmm. So um, you guys are kind of a little snow-shaped serving dish, you know, for, for <laughs> like a like 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 a like nice. a cat like a cat dish, cat bowl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess, can I ready an action? Uh, yes, you can. Um, what would you like to ready? What would you like to ready? I'd like to prepare myself to, I'd like to get like sort of brace myself against the back of the, um, the cat dish and like, like where I think it's gonna, like where I saw the paw the first time, I'm just gonna like aim. Like I'm doing it very dramatically. You just can't see me because my camera's not working. But like I'm aiming and like <laughs> leaning back, and it's like really dramatic. And I'm just like, Ugh, like wait. Okay, okay. Give me a perception roll. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, everybody, give me perception rolls to try and figure out where this thing's going to come at you next. Where it's going to jump over the side of the. Oh, that's not bad at all. That's five. Two. <laughs> Two. Okay. Um. Uh, I mean, as this thing is it. as this thing is moving around, um, uh, Lehman, you uh, you suddenly realize ah, it's it's over there, and you get to be the first person to take a shot at it. Uh, I assume at this point I'm not aiming, or because it's sort well, of well, yeah, yeah, there's no bonus shot. to aiming. It's just a it's just a quick shot. All right, so go say it's over there, <laughs> and that's going to be three. Okay, bang. Um, you shoot it, um, for all of the good it does, it, um, it, uh, uh, comes over the top of the, uh, the tent, its claws rake down into the, uh, into the, into the center with you guys. Let's see. Uh, its initiative is very high. Uh, oops. And come on. That's not the hyena Don Smilodon. <laughs> okay, and let me go here. Mm -hmm. 
roll damage. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. That's terrible. <laughs> oh, boy. Really? <laughs> eight, eight, die, eight die of lethal damage, and I do two fucking points. That's really that's wow. sort of, that's really sort we, of we, disappointing. We feel really right. bad for you, Scott. Mm. Well, the smell of dawn manages to 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 land a paw on uh, on Cal uh, on catastrophe Nell and digs its claw into you and does two points of lethal damage to you. Dang it! Uh, okay, I'm writing that down. It is uh, got its claws hooked in you and it is trying to pull it pull you towards its mouth. Oh no! And uh, okay, um, uh, and is it? Uh, what are you? What are you doing, Edith? <laughs> Kablam! You're gonna shoot it. All right, roll me some dice. Oh man, I really used up all my successes before too. <laughs> What'd you get? Two. Two. Okay, you shoot it. It opens its giant titanic jaws to clamp down on Molly. And um, then suddenly some sort of completely heretofore uh, not understood uh, weapon, uh, a part of its natural weaponry, uh, leaps out kind of like the extra set of jaws in the Alien movies Ooh. where, uh, yes, this giant uh, spear leaps out of its mouth. <laughs> Blood splashes all over all of you, basically. Uh, and when I say spear, I mean, you know, it's a it's three or four inches across. The spearhead is this big. Splatters through this thing's mouth. It's like the size of the things that they were shooting at Drogon in the last <laughs> episode of uh, Game of Thrones. Huge spear. Like the, black, the Black Arrow from the Hobbit movie, but not the Hobbit book. Yeah. And um, the animal is now kind of uh, flopping around. Um it detaches it it, it. it jerks its claws out of you, uh, Molly, mm -hmm. um, for another lethal hit. You have been let go from the monster, um, and mm -hmm. it is sort of thrashing around on the edge of your uh, snow fort, tearing it up, knocking it all down. And um, as your, your snow fort's falling apart, uh, what do you do, Molly? Uh, well, I mean, okay, so I have three non-lethal and three lethal damage, and I have six health, so... Okay, right. here's how that works. Non-lethal <laughs> non -lethal damage mounts up in the game. Okay. When it gets all the way up to the top, um, your character passes out or goes okay. unconscious. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get lethal damage, mm -hmm. it overwrites the non-lethal. Mm -hmm. ah. So right now, you've just got three lethal damage. Mm -hmm. We're not going to worry about the non-lethal. Oh, I got you. Okay. You were able uh, to act this turn. I'm able to act this turn. I uh, say, I hate cats. <laughs> and, uh, and do something cool. I only thought of the line, but not the action. I stay, I, I, I'll get to my feet and see what's, I'll see who threw the spear. Well, it, it's, nobody's thrown the spear. Um, there's a guy standing on the spear. Uh -huh. um, big guy wearing a parka. Um, big beard sticking out from underneath the parka. It's all like, you know, uh -huh. um, some sort of leather or seal skin or something like that. Um, he stands about 12 feet tall. I, I say to him, I hate cats. Uh, <laughs> he says something in a language you don't understand. And he's he's still trying to wrestle with the animal. It's 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 dying. You, I, I'm presuming you guys would like to get out of the way of the flailing claws. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's sort yeah. of our agenda. Okay. You. That's not a problem. You can get out of the way of the flailing claws. Great. Uh, do you polish off the animal, or do you wait for him to to finish it off? I want to read the room. What does he seem? Is he like? Is he into this? Am I gonna? Am I taking the kill? <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Um, uh, I can. I can. We can empathy it. Roll he, under empathy. Okay. At least I, I can. I can empathy it. Or at least. Sure. Yeah. You do it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um. 
Yeah, he's using um, an enormous amount. Well, the guy's, the, again, the size of a bus. Mm -hmm. um, he's trying to keep this thing from flipping over or, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, turning around on the spear and uh, getting its claws into him. Um, shooting it would not, I think helping to kill it would not annoy him. Mm -hmm. All right. I imagine it's a little awkward at this range. So uh, uh, I think I, I might, if we've got those cutlasses, <laughs> we might try to, I might try to just like gank this thing. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, go ahead and uh, let's see here. You might be better with a pistol than a cutlass. Um, I wasn't sure if the, if the, my dinky gun was, was doing much, much. You are, you are uh, better with a, uh, uh, a gun than a cutlass, but oh, okay. uh, you can still, you can still try and, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, we'll check things up. Cutlass. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, you know, we gotta for the audience at home. You know, we gotta, we gotta make these things interesting. All right. Well, if you, you do that, grab it, by the, grab it by the by the scruff and be like, shh, <laughs> and draw it carefully across its throat. Does yeah. anyone have a squirt gun? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, bad. No, bad kitty. Bad kitty. Get down. Yeah. Right, so, <laughs> um, the uh, uh. uh Getting the cutlass out, you know, and getting up there to 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 hack it with the cutlass. The downside is is that it will put you possibly in the way of getting shot by anyone who wants to use a gun. Because <laughs> you're gonna yeah, be ghost, close. You're gonna be close I got, enough. I got ghost defenses. Oh, that's <laughs> true. That's very true. I forget about your um. Yes. My, All the, right. The one way the ghosts actually help me. <laughs> All right. Um. Go ahead and let's see here. Uh, brawl strength. plus anything? You want to roll your strength? Oh, not brawl? For a, no, no. It's a, This is a uh, melee weapon attack, which oh. you're not trained in. So go ahead okay. and roll me uh, on your strength. Okay. I, Two I dice, was hoping, I, was hoping, I was hoping brawl was the sort of default melee. <laughs> no, no. That's, that's, for, that's for punching things. Punch oh. it. Please don't punch it. Okay, oh. that was. I wasn't gonna punch it. Uh, do I get any bonus with the cutlass? Does it add anything to my uh, roll? Yes, it does. But um, uh, because I'm untrained. Hold on, hold on. Because you're untrained, it's back down okay. to two. Okay. Uh, uh, you know what? This is this is this is literally for style. So I'll use some of my style on this. All right, all right. Hold <laughs> on just a second. Let me make sure I'm looking at this thing right. Uh, weapons, weapons, weapons. Cutlass has got. I think it's two lethal or three lethal. Okay. Yeah, all right. Go ahead. How much style would you like to burn, sir? Um, I'll burn it up my, my, my remaining two. All right. Go ahead and uh, roll me four dice. Uh, okay. Even with that, it's just one success. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> um, you stab uh, this thing uh, with the cutlass. Um, you are finding that uh, you are... Uh, and I'm going to presume that if there was any way to sharpen this cutlass, you sharpen the cutlass, all right? <laughs> um, there was a whetstone on this ship. That, yeah, that's sure. fine. Um, There's not a lot to do while we're walking. Yeah, you stab into this thing uh, with its thick hide and its fur and its blubber and whatever else it's got on it to keep it warm in these Arctic nights and um, do not appear to do any damage to it. But at least I'm in the way now, guys. Yes, so I'm, I'm in, you've got in, that in, going in, in some ways, I'm helping. Um. <laughs> The uh, the giant who is basically Game of Thrones sized giant. I mean, he's like twelve fucking feet tall. You know, um, uh, says something uh, that sounds vaguely familiar to um, uh, Edith Carruthers. Um, he speaks a language that sounds familiar. To you. It sounds a bit like uh, uh, Danish. Um, you, uh, but it's. Uh, a much uh, it's a much older version of Danish. It's the you know it's the old English version of English, mm -hmm. uh, so to speak. But um, uh, he 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 he, you're, you're absolutely sure that he's he's swearing. <laughs> 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 um, he seems uh, slightly disappointed in the, uh, in, in uh, uh, gentleman John's performance. Mm -hmm. um, and but but and and is grousing about it. Um, <laughs> what would you two ladies like to do about this uh, thrashing about Smilodon? How 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 in the way is Gentleman Jack? Yeah. Well, if you were to shoot at this thing, and uh, you'd get some minuses to your die roll. If you want to make sure you don't shoot him, 
Mm. You'd have to make some. He takes some minuses for your die rolls. If he got close enough to try and hit it with a cutlass, could we get close enough to try and headshot it execution style? Or yeah, absolutely. Uh, can I can I lasso it? Ooh, um, ooh, you've got a lariat, ooh. absolutely. Can I? Okay, so okay, Edith, Edith, you go and do that thing that you're talking about, and I'm going to lasso it in the meantime. Okay, okay. cool. So, right, then. so, 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 keep, keep, keep verbal, verbal confirmation that a, a robe will be thrown, and, and then I'll, All right. and then I'll try to I'll, like do some, some tricks first, and like hop in and out of it, and then, and I'll burn some style points because it's eight fifty, and um, <laughs> I'll burn two on this. All right, go ahead and throw me the lariat. Uh, that's okay. a seven. Okay, so I get nine, right? Yep. Four. Okay. Um, you do, in fact, lasso one of its paws. Um, you, uh, uh, you know, lean into this thing so that you can sort of, uh, you know, keep that paw from reaching around and clawing mm -hmm. at this guy, mm -hmm. uh, using your whole body to hold down this one uh, part of the critter. Um, go ahead and let's see here. Your strength is three. Wow. Okay. Uh, roll me three <laughs> dice. Three dice, please. Two successes. Wow, you beat the smilet on by Yay. one point. You were able to restrain <laughs> that arm while it is thrashing around. Um, and uh, Edith, let's go ahead and try and shoot this thing with this big old honking rifle. All righty. I got him. I got him. Oh, that's more like it. Five successes. Okay, blam, thud. It just. It collapses. We got him. We got him. We did this together. Oh, all all of us. All of us helped. Like <laughs> the uh, the man, I guess, um, sticks his boot um, into the back of this thing and pulls the spear out, and then looks at all of you guys. And there's a giant cloud of steam that pours out from under his his hood, and um, um, he just sort of regards the three of you down there. Covered in blood. I mean, there's all this blood for the fucking <laughs> smile it on all over all of you. And you're just, and um, he kind of goes, mm, and um, uh, lumbers over and grabs the smile down by a leg and starts pulling it out of your shelter and sort of, you know, pulls it aside and then just sort of goes around to the side and gets the other smile it on and begins to do the same thing. Grabs whoa, it and whoa, pulls whoa, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's dinner. He, Can't he you at least give us the drumstick? Um, uh, the Edith? sweet breads? What do you try, Edith? <laughs> maybe, the, maybe, maybe the tripe. Would you care for some Smilodon tripe? Mm. <laughs> um, what do you do? I'm 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 going to I'm going to point at the point at the smile it on and point at all the all the wounds on the smile it on and ourselves and all these gestures that say we killed this fucker fair and square <laughs> like the other one you helped mm. this one's ours. All right, um, uh, you're, you he he sort of um has got these black beady eyes that sort of stare down out from under this uh sort of I don't know maybe it's seal skin maybe it's you know maybe. Woolly, Woolly, woolly mammoth skin hood and um uh he uh he grunts out something in this sort of norse throw off language and uh and says he says something like i've been tracking these for he's trying he's trying to say like he's trying to call dibs like, I've been tracking <laughs> these for days. <laughs> dibs. No, dibs. Yeah. Uh, uh, you speak this language, Edith? Uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a dialect of, the, of, mm -hmm. of, uh, of Danish, but much older. Mm -hmm. do, you, gonna... do your best. You're the one with the linguistic skills. Yeah. 
So um, it's ours and I'll, I'll point it and, and I'll point at my mouth and I'll point at my belly and I'll rub my belly and I'll point at him and then I'll point angrily again at it and like just gesture like enormously at him. Like what the heck? Um, He's trying to take your canapes. <laughs> you're smiling on canapes. Yeah. Um, he, um, uh, go on and tell him it's ours. We killed it. <laughs> Okay. Am, we, 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 we haven't eaten in days. We, leave, leave us the one. We killed it. Please. Um, he says something like, you can't eat all of it. But come back to my camp and I'll cut you some. Ooh. Mm, that sounds good. Damn, this sounds good. This is a giant. This is, this is a Jotunheim, yay. Mm. Okay. We will we will go with the giant man back to his camp full of candy. I mean Smilodon me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, in that case, um, there's not much point in policing up the bits of poor old Captain Marin. Uh, he's not looking too good. Um, <laughs> do you want to bury him under the ice and snow, or do you just want to go? Can we just sort of like collapse our bivouac onto him and just call it a day? <laughs> Let's set it on fire. Let's set it on fire. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, That's respectful. Can, yeah. Yeah. And plus, and once he's on fire, you'll smell it like, and it'll make you hungrier. <laughs> <laughs> For the Smilodon. No, I don't think we should leave our tarp. I mean, like, he's dead. He doesn't need it. We'll no, we'll it. take, we'll take, we'll take the salvageable stuff, but you know, yeah. like, you okay. Know. All right. You collapse the snow and you bury him into a cairn or whatever hmm. of snow. But the, um, uh, the, uh, this guy, this enormous Jotun, he um, he uh, uh, takes his spear, which has kind of a, a big leather thong, and he puts it over his shoulder, almost like a rifle sling, and reaches down and grabs a paw in each hand and just starts walking off, dragging these Smilodon with him. And um, I presume you follow? That's, that's, that's my hope. All right, then. Do you want to arrive at his camp or do we leave that for next week's exciting episode or next season's or next <laughs> summer's exciting episodes? Wait, can I can I can I can I just ask, is it is it a nice camp? Um yes. Yes, it is. It is not covered with the bones of Englishmen mm -hmm. that he's ground okay. to 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 <laughs> to make his bread. Um all right, so this is not a Terry Gilliam giant. <laughs> no, no. It, 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 you get back to his camp and he does have a a giant tent that's appropriate for his size Aww. and he has a uh, 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 you know, a fire pit that he's made and so. you you are actually off the ice you are actually on land covered with rocks and there's, um, no, there's no giant swastika on this tent, right? No, there is no okay. giant swastika. I was actually going to ask as well if the giant was a Nazi, but like I was going to chill on it, but I'm glad to know that everybody was thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, like, he's, 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 he's from this giant if he's a Nazi. He's blonde, but he's <sighs> got uh, sort of uh, dark, very dark brown eyes. Mm. And um, his he hasn't caliper to our skulls yet, so I feel yeah. pretty pretty good. Yeah, yeah he hasn't started has measuring your skulls for pure Aryan skull shape. Mm. Um, He's, um, but he gets back to his camp and it's, uh, you know, um, he's got what appear to be a bunch of huge fucking wolves that are all tied up in like a, uh, they're all tied together in sort of, uh, uh, a little area. He's got like a sledge, uh, Ooh. almost like a, you know, almost like a, like a dog sled, except it's freaking gigantic. And, um, He's got a number of big giant uh, poles he's driven into the ground that he's stretched various pelts on that have been scraped. There's, you know, there's definitely um, uh, stuff that's uh, uh, animal meat that's, uh, you know, been put aside and um, some of it that has been handed off to the dogs, or I should say wolves. These are huge animals. But yeah, uh, you cool. were, uh, you, that, that's the sort of camp we're talking about. It looks like, it looks very, um, it's a, it looks a little bit, it looks a little Inuit to you, you know, like an Inuit hunting camp. Cool. We don't have to keep playing. I just wanted to know, I just wanted to know yeah. where it was. Like, yeah, before, yeah. Before, the, before, the, before the credits, you know, play out, you know, as, as, as we're, you know, filling our bellies with, with Smilodon meat, I'll sort of uh, turn to Edith and be like, hey, do you, do, do you speak giant? What, ask him what's going on with that son. Which, by the way, when you get back to the camp, 
the um, the the uh, sky is cleared enough that you can see um, sort of a blue sky. Uh, well, mm, no, not a blue sky. There's a big ball of light up there, and um, as you finally get to look out at the horizon, you sort of have a moment of agoraphobia, as if perhaps you are standing on the underside of a plane wing. Um, the uh, the landscape as it goes off to infinity suddenly keeps going from infinity and seems to rise in the distance until eventually it is uh, sort of obscured by cloud cover in all directions i think we may be on the wrong side of the world guys this must be china <laughs> or australia one or the other hmm. I don't think Earth is supposed to bend like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, there's not actually a horizon horizon, hmm. you know. Um, Dramatic yeah. John Williams music plays. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's a big the, <laughs> the music rises, you know, in a sort of a, you know, that sort of Jurassic Park music when Sam Neill's hyperventilating, you know. <laughs> Welcome to the hollow Earth. <laughs> ba -ba -ba. Da -da -da -da. Exact. There you go. <laughs> So, all right, you have made it into the hollow earth. No, yeah, no, we did no, it, guys. No, no doubt the next time we encounter you, you'll be on, I don't know, a pirate ship, possibly yeah. captured by Amazons. Mm. Um, I'll be on Mars. Yeah, uh, or you could be on Mars. You never can tell with this place. It's well, fucked well, <laughs> well, Scott, thank you for uh, taking us through various uh, uh, adventures and whatnot. Uh, if folks are interested in finding you and your work, uh, where the best place they can go? The best place they can go is probably uh, Arc Dream Publishing for the Delta Green stuff right now. Uh, you can find some other Delta Green material and some other Pagan Publishing material can be found in drive Through RPG. Um, we have a website at tccorp.com, which is so out of date, it's embarrassing, and I shouldn't tell you what the address is, because <laughs> if you look at it, you'll realize what freaking amateurs we are. <laughs> um, so, you know, Find us there. If I was a real professional, we'd have a Facebook page. All right. Well, I'll take it. <laughs> Rachel. Uh, you can either find me at my website, www.rachelkohler.com. Uh, Kohler is K-O-L-A-R, like polar, but with a K. Uh, or you can follow me on Twitter at Kohler Rachel. Um, I do have a Facebook writer page, but I almost never update it. So Twitter is better. Excellent. And Molly. Um, I. I am on Instagram and I am on Twitter and I usually keep my Facebook locked down. So if you like to, if you would like to be my friend on Facebook, please send me a message and be like, I'm not a creep. Um, Cause otherwise I'll just leave you hanging in limbo forever. Yes. That's, yes. Please do that. I don't that's know why just people... the truth of me. And, um, yeah. but anyway, like as for other stuff, I never update my website. So probably, but uh, things are happening with me and you can find my stuff wherever books are sold. Fantastic. Oops. And, uh, We'll definitely uh, be looking out uh, for uh, your uh, nomination at the, for the Locus, which is well, uh, absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna go. I here. I said it in public live. I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go, and I'll I'll go. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, <laughs> we we look if, forward uh, folks, to yes. we look forward to showing you around Seattle. Oh yeah, no, I I like I may indeed be chilling with our illustrious G GM or storyteller keeper. What is the what is the nomenclature? Uh, yeah, I can't remember what it is. It's game master. It's Dungeon Dino, Dino Master. Dino Wrangler. Dino okay. master. Yeah. Yeah, dungeon master. <laughs> Great dungeon. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Well, uh, folks uh, have enjoyed this. You can uh, find uh, more as Lovecraft After Dark uh, by just searching that up. Uh, you can be part of these fun live shows. Uh, and we had some commentary uh, from Greg, uh, who uh, was was curious if these may have been uh, dent milodons instead of smilodons. Uh, I explained to him, I'm not a zoologist. so <laughs> and, and and neither am I. I, I, just... didn't, I didn't know that smilodons were real. I thought that you, I thought I had stopped paying attention for a minute and you'd made a joke oh. that I didn't oh, quite no. catch. So I just like went with it. I was like, yes, yeah, smilodons. Yeah, like these jerks with their smiles. And then I <laughs> Oh, no, they are they are cats with teeth. Okay. The uh. the only reason I know that is because when Nashville got a hockey team, which still makes me laugh, uh, they called them the Nashville Predators, but mm. it was they were Smilodons. I'm like, why are you like you could have had Smiley the Smilodon? Like that would have been amazing. Mm. That would have been a great, anyway. would have been a great mascot. Yeah. Or they could have gone with the guys from the movies with the dreadlocks and the whole <laughs> opening mouth thing. That <laughs> would have been bitching. 
that would have been, been yeah. and you know, would have been felt very Nashville. Uh, <laughs> Nothing says uh, Nashville like alien invaders. Yeah, <laughs> precisely. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, when I'm not uh, talking about Nashville, uh, folks can uh, find uh, find about this show if you want to be part of the live show. Uh, you can join the uh, Ask uh, Ask Love Craft Appreciation Society. Uh, we share fun, wholesome memes about uh, cats, usually. Uh, and it's uh, you can get a lot of information about the show as Lovecraft, which appears three times a week. Uh, if you want to see me impersonating H.P. Lovecraft, uh, which is very strange. Uh, otherwise, folks uh, can find me uh, yelling on the void uh, on Twitter at Lehman Kessler. Um, if folks want to know about live shows uh, and things that are coming up, you can go to uh, LehmanKessler.com. Uh, and if you want to support the show, if you want to see us do more cool and ambitious things, uh, you can uh, support it at patreon.com slash Lovecraft. But uh, thank you to everyone for watching. And thank you, all my wonderful gamers, for coming back to the Hollow Earth. Uh, will, will you be appearing as Agent Coulson anytime in the near future? I was always very happy with your, your Agent Coulsoning um, at the various Marvel films. <laughs> Yeah, I did that for uh, uh, Ultron. I I bloodied up uh, one of my, my uh, uh, mm. worst Lovecraft suits. Because, yeah, to do Agent Coulson, all I do is just w dress up as Lovecraft and don't do the Lovecraft voice. And people are yeah. like, oh, hey, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I got a backup career if I want to do Ask Coulson. Um, <laughs> That's true. Uh, but, uh, you do uh, look more like Agent Coulson than he did in Captain Marvel when they CGI'd his face. So, oh. like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed my calling. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you could have no, been not. his body double. Yeah. Uh, I, I I will be hanging out with uh, uh, bearded giants uh, when I go to Santa Fe in July. Folks can catch me at George R. R. Martin's uh, Jean Cocteau Cinema. So I will be doing my Ask Lovecraft show there, uh, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, uh, hopefully he will not spear me. So, <laughs> But you'll have to show up to find out. Uh, okay. Again, thank you all so much uh, uh, for coming on. And uh, I, think, uh, I think chances are we're going to go back to this Hall of Worth, guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be down. Awesome. I'll, I'll be more prepared next time. I do I, apologize again. I really, I, I, I booted up the computer and I got my mouse set up and I was like feeling super chill about my <laughs> technology engagement issue. And then it was just like, <gasps> so I do apologize. No, it's great. It had that, it had that fun, like old timey radio, like, you know, dialing in, yeah, you know, exactly. quality to it. It was I'm just, just like, the sense of dread in my gut when like you were talking and I couldn't hear you. It was like, I don't know how to dress, address this at all. Like, <laughs> you, you just hold up signs like you're a hostage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. So, just, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, that was fantastic, everyone. Thank you so much once again. And uh, yeah, we'll Thank be seeing you, you guys uh, around. All right. Yeah. Bye, all. Be seeing you. Bye-bye.